this could be possibly one of my most popular what ifs or this could be a what if that ends up being a dud and no one watches the worst thing is I don't know which one I'm voting for anymore what's up everybody anime x here and in this video I will be doing something a little unprecedented thing on the channel uh, so for the first time I'll be doing a bleach what if and just like the title and thumbnail suggests I'll be doing what if Naruto and Ichigo were brothers now, as you guys know, I set like goals recently, but since I don't know how you guys are going to respond to this, I'll set the like goal at a measly 200 likes. If we get that, if we get 200 likes, part 2 will come out as soon as I can. But, just like always guys, I'll be giving some background info on the what if, then jumping right into it. And so, without further ado, let's get started. Now, in this what if, there are a few things that kind of need to be established that I may be establishing right here, and I'm also maybe establishing as we go through, throughout the what if, so just wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, so I'll explain kind of what happened in the what if in particular. So the first two things that as of now uh, are a fact Ichigo and Naruto both reside in the Naruto verse for now meaning that they're both in like on in Naruto the leaf village or whatever right they're gonna start their origins in Naruto. The two verses haven't been have been merged but we'll get into that as time goes on. Also the other main thing is the fact that Ichigo does not have chakra but he has Ryatsu similar to how he does in the original, and likewise Naruto has chakra but not spiritual pressure, meaning that the interaction between them will get pretty interesting at times, but the rest of the stuff that I need to talk about will unfold as we go throughout the what if, so let's jump right into it. Now the first thing that I need to establish in this what if is that, um, like the events that are have been established leading up to Naruto's story have been the exact same way as they do until then, so meaning Kushin and Minato have already died, and Naruto and Ichigo are now orphans and are basically all alone and have no one except for each other. Naruto still has Karama sealed inside of him, and Ichigo still has his, you know, Zangetsu and the Hollow, the white Ichigo inside of him as well, which is unbeknownst to anybody in the village at that point. Similar to the original, Naruto is a delinquent and seeks attention from the village at all costs and from basically anyone that will give him any, uh, <laughs> any attention. So, while, but Ichigo is much more level-headed, chill, and relaxed. In, in fact, as the slightly older twin, by about, like, a minute, he decides to take on the role as a parent and as the older brother to a certain degree and decides to attempt at least to keep Naruto out of trouble. So when Ichigo hears that Naruto has defaced yet again the Hokage's faces which are embedded in stone, Ichigo gives a good beating to Naruto. After this, Ichigo goes out to get some supplies for their house and even at the ripe old age of 6, Ichigo has taken full responsibilities of adult life into stride. Ichigo basically runs the household of Naruto and Ichigo and he holds together their, fa their house or their two-person family, barely by the seams. And even though Naruto does act dumb and irresponsibly, Ichigo loves Naruto more than anything else in the world, which is, uh, which, while Ichigo is daydreaming and dealing with all the stuff that he needs to deal with at that moment, he walks right into Ino, Sakura, and Orihime, who are all talking and walking with each other. After they all fall down and stuff, Ino and Sakura are about to get mad until they notice that Ichigo, it was Ichigo who ran into them. After this, they see this, they, they, they collect, they try to help and collect Ichigo's stuff, attempting to apologize frantically, obviously very flustered by the fact that Ichigo's there. As this is happening, or he manages just the background grabbing her face, acting extremely flustered and confused and frankly weird. After that, after he collects all of his stuff, Ichigo heads off while Ino and Sakura are fawning all over him. After this, Ichigo just brushes himself off and runs, runs to go pick up some food and brings it back to prepare for dinner. After Naruto ravages down his food for a bit, he asks Ichigo why they were allowed to eat so much since they're usually on such a tight budget. After this, Ichigo says it was a special occasion, since tomorrow they're going to start training in the academy, so they both lay down for bed, and when they wake up, they get ready to head out. So, when they both have a, head over to the academy, just like in the original, Naruto is essentially jutsu retarded, and bad at controlling his chakra, and the horrible revelation hits Ichigo. He has no chakra. Absolutely none. This thought sends Ichigo reeling for a good 10 seconds. Because that's how long it takes Ichigo to realize that he doesn't care about being a ninja for any reason other than to keep Naruto safe. When he figures that he can't become a ninja, he just decides that he'll just have to find some other way to be strong enough to protect Naruto since he's his family. Uh, so he's just going to push his body to the absolute limits in order to get stronger without the crutch of having to use chakra. We then skip forward in time to where both Naruto and Ichigo are 13, and Naruto is preparing to take his, his academy test for the third time yet again, and Naruto fails yet again. When he gets this news for uh, for the third time, he's about to lose hope when he hears his, the news that Mizuki and Iruka sensei after the exam. But after after this, Mizuki gives Naruto an opportunity to become an official Genin by stealing the scroll from the Hokage office as a little mission for him, just like he does in the original. 
when news hits that Naruto stole the scroll from the village and he could possibly be in danger, Naruto, Ichigo runs out of his house at full speed and heads to the woods where he has a sneaking suspicion where Naruto's at. Praying that he makes it in time, Ichigo is interrupted when out of nowhere he sees his first hollow ever. Specifically, he sees his first fist of a hollow since it slams right into his face and Ichigo's flying into a nearby building. He then gets up after, uh, due to his rigorous training, he's able to withstand much more punishment than your average person, meaning that that punch was more of like a regular human's punch to him rather than something that would obliterate him. He's also faster, which he shows off when he disappears behind the hollow and throws a haymaker at the hollow with all of his strength. He is shortly reminded that this hollow is a lot stronger than him when it not only connects with the hollow's face and it does no damage, but when the hollow retaliates yet again and slamming up and punching him around. After he's been beaten a little bit, he sees a little girl, or not a little girl, a girl that looks about his age, that looks pretty ghostly and kneeling beside him. And when I say ghostly, I mean she looks ethereal and she looks like she could, she could, she could possibly be like, like uh, she looks ethereal basically. When his vision is stopped blurring, he hops up and out of his daze, and he sees that the ghost girl seems injured. When he tries to help her move, he tries to move the sword out of the way, and as soon as he makes contact with the hilt of the sword, it disappears along with the girl's heavenly glow and aura, but then in a bright flash of shines all throughout the village, uh, Nar Ichigo comes out standing in a black shoe hawk show and a huge sword in his hand. Like, this sword's like a good, a good six to seven feet long, and while Ichigo's a 13 year old, this is retardedly huge. When Ichigo sees the sword, he knows abs he abs obviously needs this sword to kill that monster, and with this training, he's able to essentially blitz and utterly obliterate the hollow with one shot or one upward swing of the sword. As soon as this happens, Ichigo uses his newfound speed and strength to grab the formerly injured girl, take her to Naruto in Ichigo's place, and tells her to stay put in there, and then disappears and heads into the wood. But when Ichigo gets there, he sees that Aruka is covered in blood, and he has been pierced by a large shuriken. When he goes up to Aruka, he tries to ask him where Naruto is, but he gets no response. And after he yells at him and gets annoyed at Aruka for not answering, he tries hitting him, but he ends up facing right through him. He notices when he looks down at his hands, he has the same fairly ghostly look just like that girl, but he has no time to think about that, so he just listens for the battle sounds in the woods and decides to head towards those sounds at full speed. Now, when he gets there to try to protect Naruto, he sees that Naruto needs absolutely no help in this fight, as he sees that Naruto has Mizuki handle with the 2,000 Shadow Clones absolutely beating him to a pole. When he goes up to, to uh, Naruto, he thinks that he can't see him, so just like no one else would. So he tries to walk right past him, but Naruto then sees him and actually grabs him by his shock show, Shuhakusho, I should say. And when this happens, Ichigo is confused, and so so is Naruto because of the clothes that Ichigo is wearing at the moment. And just when he's about to ask all of all of Ichigo, um, just what I ask what Ichigo is doing and what he's wearing, all of Ichigo's energy and adrenaline runs out, making him return back to his normal body, also making it so Ichigo can clearly be seen. And the two of them just look at each other knowing that they have a lot of explaining to do. A ton of explaining backstories and a good night's sleep later, Naruto and Ichigo are now up. And just when they're about to clean themselves up, like take a shower, brush their teeth, that kind of stuff, normal human stuff. Uh, they go, uh, Naruto walks into the bathroom to see that there's a strange girl sleeping in the bathtub. Without skipping a beat, when this happens, he just walks out calmly, grabs Ichigo and shows him what he saw. When Ichigo sees this girl from last night in his bathtub, he does the only normal thing a person could do possibly at that time. He picks her up, puts her over his shoulder, and is about to throw her out of the house. And while he's in the process of actually throwing her outside, she wakes up and adjusts to the idea of, having, of her having to get out. She's trying to come up with excuses and reasons on why she sh on why she should be able to stay there, and uh, why she and when none of them work, she just sighs and says that she can tell Ichigo what he fought, why he was able to fight it, and what's going to happen from then on. After hearing this, he pauses, but after a bit of thought, he decides, I don't really care, so he keeps walking, and Ruki adds that she can train him on how to use his newfound power. As soon as Ichigo hears this, he drops the world girl onto the ground, extends his hands in a nice, friendly manner, and a creepy smile, he says that he's in. And that, everybody, is where I'm going to end part one to the What If Naruto and Ichigo are Brothers. Obviously, I'm trying something new, so if you guys like the concept, make sure to hit the like button to get the like goal of 200 likes. If you are new to the channel and haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on more Naruto slash Ichigo What If content. If you, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, guys, this is Anime X. Signing off.